we have uh, organized uh, our agenda for the next several months. We'll have public hearings in Chicago, in San Francisco, in Washington. And uh, we have uh, some youth consultants coming in during the summer who will provide an input to our staff. We will also be making some overseas trips for purposes of observing how this is handled uh, with our armed services and also with, uh, uh, you know, the government, how the, how the nations are. Well, I think the ones that were there last week were generally peaceful and uh, tried to dissent in an orderly manner. Those that are there this week are of a different stripe, and these appear to be more militant. And I think that in that instance where they try to disrupt the orderly processes of government, I think they should be arrested. And I think whatever the law punishments are that are provided under the law, I think that that should be meted out to them. Yes, we had some visitors uh, last week and uh, had a very interesting visit with some of the Vietnam veterans against the war. Uh, they were uh, more peaceful in their demonstrations. They were quite polite, but deeply concerned and I think quite sincere. Now the group that's there this week is quite different. These are militants and I really think are anarchists. And if it wasn't this issue, I think they'd find themselves another issue to try to disrupt the government. And I don't believe it's the obligation of the United States Senator to listen to just the most strident voices. I think these people want to impose the will of the minority on the majority, really. Do you have any plans for uh, tomorrow? I understand they have big plans on what they're going to do to Washington. Well, I have a speech I'm making here at noon and then flying immediately back. But we're planning business as usual in my office, and, and I expect the Senate to be in session, and I'll be back there for it. What have you learned new about marijuana and drug abuse that you didn't know before? That it's a vast problem. It's a tremendous problem. Of course, our concentration this first year has been on marijuana, and uh, I'm impressed with the enormity of the problem and uh, the many uh, views that are taken with respect to its settlement and solution, and we're trying to hear every, every side of it. What do you hope that the Commission will ultimately be able to do? Well, uh, our charge by the Congress is to come back with, uh, with particular findings uh, with, uh, and recommendations uh, with respect to any legislative changes that would be made at the national level. I ask you at the first of the year, and I'll ask you again, do you think your commission might end up like some other presidential commissions have, and that is the target of quite a bit of controversy? Oh, I'm sure that will be true because the subject is controversial. and. Uh, no matter what you say, uh, somebody's going to disagree with you, and I'm sure there'll be a good deal of vocal disagreement, whatever we say. Now, the way we feel this will work is that if a boy or girl comes into our house and is either going to need immediate emergency care at the hospital, where the parents would have to be informed right then that they're going, or uh, the boy and girl ask that somebody speak to their parents and explain his situation. The counselors here will then have our names and they will be able to call us any time of the day or night and we will be responsible for talking with the families of the boy or girl here. Now, the uh, service we hope to offer them is, first of all, to simply by being adults and being a little bit knowledgeable, offer them some help just by being people and being there with them. The second thing is that we have spent some time becoming informed about the effects of the various drugs and uh, what the parent might be seeing. We hope by doing this to um, answer some of their fears about what's happening. And thirdly, to uh, offer suggestions as to various resources in the community that might be of help to the family. The tomb-like quality that you find in these Dallas City Council chambers on a Sunday will be broken tomorrow morning. At 11 a.m., we'll have a brand new mayor and a brand new city council. And the first order of business for our brand new city council and mayor is going to be to find out who will be the new mayor pro tem. 
and the new Deputy Mayor Pro Tem. Ted Holland and George Allen are in the front and running, and it should be a very close contest. There are also quite a few other items of business for the brand new City Council to handle. A brand new mayor and city council for Dallas. They're going to be busy tomorrow. Malcolm Landers for Channel 8 News at the Dallas City Council Chambers. Well, uh, after, after I'm finished, I can say, yes, I did. But before you start, you never know. And uh, I just couldn't be happy with my three rounds. You mentioned number five is the toughest hole on the course. How did you play it your three rounds? Well, uh, I didn't didn't play it real well, but I didn't make any mistakes. I knocked it on the green all three days and two putted. And so I uh, I made three fours there, which just I that was the way I wanted to play it. How'd you play number twelve? Well, number twelve was very very kind to me. The first day I three putted it for par, and then uh, yesterday I made about a twelve footer for eagle, and today I made about a thirty footer for eagle. So that hole was extremely kind to me. There's a with a championship in the bag, what are your thoughts as you tee off on number 18? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, you you know, you just, you don't want to really, you know, stumble there. So you just, you know, try to find two just real smooth golf swings and see what you can do. And uh, I didn't hit a, I hit a good tee ball, but I didn't hit a real good second shot. But fourth one got it fairly close. And uh, I would have liked to have made three, but uh, I was just trying to get it close and make sure I made four. How close was your putt there to falling in? Oh, it was just hanging on the lip. I Probably another turn it would have gone in. How would you compare these three rounds with your last week's championship effort? Well, of course, they're two entirely different golf courses. And, and uh, last week, uh, I played well. But I think this week, I think that uh, I probably hit the ball a lot closer to the hole. And I made a lot more putts. And uh, I would have to say that, I, well, uh, there again, I, I put the playing at home extremely tough. So I think that probably these three rounds are probably the best three rounds I've ever played in my life. Arthur Ashe will now serve. Games are tied in the tiebreaker one to one. Ashe's first service. Fault. Arthur Ashe now serving. Games tied one one. Second service. Nice shot by John Newcomb. He takes a 2-1 lead in the tiebreaker. Newcomb leading two games to one. Ashes first service, fourth game. Arthur Ash serving, trailing one game to two in the tiebreaker. Out. Games are tied 2-2, two -two, and Newcomb didn't like it. <laughs> Games tied 2-2 two -two in the tiebreaker. John Newcomb is serving first service. Turned by Ash. There it is. Newcomb leads three games two in the tiebreaker, and the crowd loved it. John Newcomb leads three games to two in the tiebreaker. His service. Newcomb leads four games to two. John Newcomb leads six points to two in the tiebreaker. This is his first service. If he wins this point, he wins the first set. Newcomb service. And that's the first set. The ace in John Newcomb wins the first set seven to six in this best two out of three set World Championship Rawlings Tennis Classic Championship match. 